Hello interwebs, my name is Desiree and I have created this video today to talk about some of the different components that make up a UCS cluster, sometimes also referred to as a UCS domain. So what I'm actually going to do today is I'm going to utilize Cisco's website. Uh, they've put together a 3D model and they have 3D models for uh, some of their chassis based catalyst switches, uh, some of their other Nexus switches, and of course the Unified Computing System. Now, some of you might be familiar with UCS already. Uh, we have two main deployments or flavors of UCS. We have our C-Series, which are our rack mount servers. And then what we're going to focus in on this video are the B-Series and the different components uh, that we'll see that make up uh, that cluster. Now the B series or the blade servers, we have lots of different models of blades. One of the most popular is the B200. We've had a couple generations of the B200. We're currently on M3, the third generation, and <clears throat> that's a half width blade. Now this chassis, this 3D model that we're taking a look at here, um, is going to be able to support eight of those B200s. Um, it's a 5108 chassis, that's the model. So it can max out at eight half width blades, or we can put four full width blades, or of course we can mix and match with half width and full width. Um, when we look at the chassis coming out of the box um, or the pallet <laughs> when it's shipped to us, uh, there is a small piece of sheet metal um, in between each slot. So if you are inserting a full width blade into two slots, you'll just need to remove that piece of sheet metal to get that full width blade in there. Uh, we have uh, in this diagram, in addition to an example of a combination of half width and full width blades, uh, we can also see that we have our hot swappable power supplies. Uh, we have a maximum of four power supplies that can be supported in that chassis. Uh, we only need two to power the entire chassis, but of course, depending on how much redundancy and resiliency we want in the UCS domain and in that chassis, we can of course have multiple power supplies to fail over to. Now right on top of that chassis up here, we actually have two fabric interconnects. Uh, the fabric interconnects that we actually see here are our first generation fabric interconnects. Um, so the fabric interconnects are going to be the 6100s and the 6200s. Uh, First generation were the 6100s. We had 20 and 48, excuse me, 20 and 40 port fabric interconnects. Uh, with second generation, we had the ability to support 48 or 96. Now, of course, with the higher port density, we have the ability to scale to a larger UCS cluster. So these two fabric interconnects actually have the ability to manage multiple chassis, uh, of course, depending on how many cables we have that are connecting down to our chassis, and of course, you know how much bandwidth each blade is going to need to support, etc. Um, now, before I flip this chassis around so we can see what some of the ports look like on the back side, um, Another thing that I just wanted to point out is the fabric interconnects also have redundant hot swappable power supplies that we can see here. Uh, we also have uh, some redundant fans. We have our L1, L2 ports, uh, which are going to be connected to one another, and that is strictly for management traffic. Uh, when we actually begin to start configuring our UCS cluster. We are going to be utilizing UCS Manager and I'm going to be creating some additional videos later down the road. One of them is going to be a high level overview of UCS Manager. Uh, but UCS Manager is our graphical user interface uh, that we can use to do things like configure service profiles that are going to eventually be pushed down onto our blades. Now, UCS Manager is actually hosted upon those Fabric Interconnects. Now, because Fabric A and Fabric B, or Fabric Interconnect A and Fabric Interconnect B, work together as though they are a team, our management traffic is going to be active standby. So oftentimes, Fabric Interconnect A might be our primary. Uh, so anytime we're actually logged into UCS Manager and we're doing things like creating VLANs or creating a service profile, um, what we're doing is we're actually writing commands to that primary Fabric Interconnect. Um, and then in the event that 
Uh, we need to bring Fabric Interconnect A down for any reason if we're doing a firmware update. Uh, Fabric Interconnect B has the ability to take over um, for that management plane traffic. Now, <clears throat> our management traffic is active standby, but our data plane traffic is always going to be active active. So even though we have these pair of Fabric Interconnects that are working as a team and are active standby for UCS Manager, um, they are always going to be forwarding traffic for uh, the virtualized environment that might reside on top of those blades. Now, I flipped our chassis around so you could get a little bit of a better idea and understanding of what the ports on the Fabric Interconnect look like. Um, and we can also see that we have um, I.O. modules here. Now, with the I.O. modules, these are shown right here. They're inserted vertically into the back of the chassis. Those are actually going to provide us with the connectivity from the chassis itself or the backplane of that chassis up to those fabric interconnects. Now the I.O. modules do have some additional components that are built into them that we're going to talk about a little bit later in some other videos. Um, but uh, that I.O. module, one of the model numbers that we'll see associated with that are going to be things like the 2100 series, which is first generation, and the 2200 series, which is second generation. Second generation, we had the ability to support up to eight ports on each I.O. module. So each port is a 10 gig port. So we actually have a total capacity of 80 gigs east and 80 gigs west, or um, 80 gigs out to fabric A and 80 gigs out to fabric B if we wanted to utilize all of those cables. And of course, with the second generation, we can even configure all eight of those cables in a port channel. So that's pretty cool. Um, when we looked at our 3D model, um, another thing that I just wanted to point out is that I lost my menu bar. Oh, there it is. It's back. <laughs> Let's see here. We have some wiring and I think they do a pretty good job of demonstrating what the wiring looks like from those IO modules up to the fabric interconnects as we see here. Notice that the physical topology is often a little bit different than a traditional network. A lot of times when we're connecting things like um, switches to one another, like access layer switches to distribution, we have some cross connectivity. Notice that these do not have any cross connectivity. IO module A on the left there is connected up to fabric A and IO module B on the right there is connected to fabric interconnect B. So just some different architectures um, in comparison to what we might see in a network infrastructure. Now, additionally, uh, we have power supplies, which are also hot swappable, a total of eight. It's a big chassis. Those blades are going to have a lot of uh, compute resources and a lot of uh, power that's being drawn. So we need to make sure that we're keeping the components inside those blades cool. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the different model blades, some of the different model rack mount servers, and some of the different types of Cisco VIX. So stay tuned for another one of my videos on the Cisco Unified Computing System. Thanks so much, everybody.